Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of 2015, A Kerbal Odyssey. This is episode 5, and in episode 5 we are going to try to fly by the moon. Now we don't have the technology to set any maneuver nodes or to target the moon, so we are going to just have to wing it. Now the moon is about 33,000 kilometers out in this uh, modified save file. It is based on a more realistic version of Kerbal Space Program. It is not quite the RSS mod. The RSS mod has resized Kerbin to the actual size of Earth. We have the mod installed, but we also have another mod that scales it back down to Kerbin's size. So it's not quite as difficult, and you don't need quite the same Delta V to get there. But still, it is farther out, and it is inclined, and we are going to have to struggle our way through reaching it. So today we have Jebediah flying the Apollo Creed, as I like to call it, a little pun there. And we are going to try and reach the moon. All we need to do is do a quick flyby. We have one mystery goo, we have one science junior, and we're going to take a crew report and an EVA report when we get out there. For those of you interested in this series, we do have currently 38 mods installed, and I'm going to read off some of the main ones. Maybe I'll get through all of them, but we'll see. Uh, first mod we have is the El Cubier Warp Drive. It's a standalone. It's not the same one as the Interstellar Quest El Cubier Drive, uh, and it doesn't quite work the same, but that's going to be a long time until we unlock that. We have an Astronomer's Pack with clouds. Uh, we do not have lights, so when you see us return, this is a this is post-commentary, so when you see us return, it's on the night side of the planet and it's really, really dark. We can't really see anything. We also have Better Buoyancy, which is a mod by Ferrum, and it uh, changes the way the water behaves to keep you from... to keep the, the water landings from being so violent because usually they are quite violent. We also have the, have the Chatterer mod, which you can hear. We have the Community Tech Tree. It's a much bigger and expanded tech tree. We do not have all the mods that it supports installed. So some of our nodes are blank, and there's nothing to unlock there. You still have to spend the science to advance, however. Uh, we also have a crew manifest, so once you're on the launch pad, you can add or remove crew, change crew out. You can create and name new crew members, assign their courage levels and stupidity levels. Uh, we have the enhanced navball mod, which really helps show where your prograde, retrograde, radial, anti-radial, normal, anti-normal, all of that. It'll show that off to the side when it's uh, when it's not on the screen here. Um, we have a few more mods. I'm not going to go over all of them now, but let's just say that it's a pretty fun save file. So, we have reached our altitude of 100 kilometers, and we are going to wait until we are at periapsis. Oh, we've actually circularized already. Never mind. Um, so now what we have to do is wait until... What we're doing here is waiting until we see the moon, and then we're going to try to burn retrograde. Correction, we're going to try to burn prograde and head out to the moon. Uh, that is a common technique used in Kerbal Space Program. It doesn't quite work the same when the moon is uh, much further out as it is right now, but it's something we're going to have to try and do anyways. So as you can see, our inclination is not quite lined up with the moon. So that is another issue we're going to have to deal with as we try to head out there. So here you can see that I'm trying to find the moon. It's not as easy to see as the moon is around Kerbin, and unfortunately, I just couldn't find it. And as you can see, you may have spotted it out in the distance. It is farther away and much smaller. I did not see it right away. So I'm kind of looking around for it, as you can tell just in case, not realizing that I had missed it. Once I do realize, and that should be any second now, you'll see me just uh, 
You'll see me realize here that it's definitely out on my screen, and so I just burn prograde anyways and and hope that I'm guessing correctly. This is, after all, we're winging it. This is just a guess. We're trying to get out as far as we can. Now, our periapsis is at 110 kilometers. We need to make sure that we keep a little bit of fuel left just in case we, uh, we miss the moon and we want to return safely to, to Earth. So if we need to, we can have a little bit of fuel left to burn retrograde at apoapsis which will bring us just inside the atmosphere. As it turns out, we have more than enough fuel to accomplish this mission. Our inclination is not the worst inclination here, but it's obviously not accurate, and it's not good enough to get ourselves an encounter with the moon. So we're going to just verify that our apoapsis is where it needs to be try to see what it needs to be it's at 36 and the moon is about 35 if i read that correctly our apoapsis is currently above the orbit of the moon and you can see our inclination is off a bit so we're going to try to burn anti-normal And hopefully we can bring that down. Now we're not quite at our ascending node yet. It's difficult to see, and we don't have the technology to tell us quite yet where it is. So what we're going to do is do a little bit of time acceleration in just a few seconds. And we're gonna head away from Earth a little bit. And now we're gonna try to burn anti-normal. And now we're bringing our apoapsis down and we are pretty much aligned with the moon at our apoapsis we are aligned up with the moon so we're gonna burn a little bit more and whoops we went a little farther than I planned but we're just gonna go with it and see where it takes us hopefully to the moon time accelerating all the way out to the moon here and we're going much slower. You can see we're starting to lose reputation points because I did not bring enough snacks for Jebediah. Jebediah needs his snacks. There's nothing he needs more than dangerous flying accompanied with snacks. But as you can see, we do encounter the moon. It's not the best encounter, but it doesn't have to be. We're just doing a flyby. So we are going to... We are going to open up our service bay and check our mystery goo. We're going to check our science junior. We're going to do a crew report and then we're going to EVA and do an EVA report as well. Now one thing we need to do is go on and collect that science and I temporarily forgot and boarded but before we get back to the atmosphere you will see me make that correction. So that, it's as simple as that. We're, once we're in the moon's sphere of influence, we can collect all the science we need. And once we've collected that science, we need to lower our periapsis down, down inside the atmosphere of Earth. I think about 30 kilometers should be a great periapsis so we can capture and then land. And now we're going to warp ahead until right before we are in the atmosphere. Only then do I realize I need to go out and collect that science. Well, not me exactly. Jebediah will be getting the science. And he's going to store it in the command module and bring it safely back to Earth for everyone to enjoy. So here at 600 kilometers above the surface of Earth, we have Jebediah getting ready to do an EVA one last EVA to go out and collect the science. Now you might be asking, why on earth did I close the service bay doors? Well, it's because I still hadn't realized that I forgot to collect the science at that point. So we can open them from the outside, we can collect the science junior, we can fly our way up, Try and fly our way up. 
and we're not doing a very good job of flying here. I have gotten progressively worse at flying around with my EVAs, and I'm not quite sure why. I really need to get my act together. But we've collected the science, and we've grabbed on and boarded pretty quickly. So we are going to enter the atmosphere. We're going to leave the service bay doors open to provide extra drag. We're going to be burning retrograde to slow ourselves down a bit. And we're going to aim a little bit higher because we don't want our periapsis to fall too far down. We want to keep it at about 30 kilometers. And now that we are out of fuel, we can decouple. And let's just aim ourselves off to the side a bit so the debris does not come back to smash into us. And you can see the two vessels with re-entry heating really starting to pick up. Oh, no, the debris stopped its re-entry heating. I'm not really sure why, but it really, it's sounding louder and looking a little bit brighter maybe. It feels like we're really starting to get into the thick parts of the atmosphere here. Our velocity is dropping. All of that drag is slowing us down tremendously. And as you can see, this debris just fly right past us. We will slowly approach on the night side of the planet. Jebediah Kerman, the first Kerman to see the dark side of the moon on his way back to Earth. This place is similar to his home planet of Kerbin. There's a planet, there's a moon, there's no Minmus. There's a camera that does not appreciate me trying to make a video here. And now that the camera has finally stabilized, we can see ourselves slowly descending deeper and deeper into the atmosphere, way, way down. And as we watch the drag slow us down, old me was just about to use physics acceleration when he received a text message all the way from Kerbin, sending them back from Earth to Kerbin and receiving them from Kerbin to Earth. The little green Kerbals, completely unaware of what had been taking place behind the fourth wall. Why are these messages coming in? Why are they being sent back out? What's being sent back and forth? Will the Kerbals ever be aware of this higher power and its communication? Will they ever realize how they were left behind, stuck here at Earth? They were happy around Kerbin, and then one day, when exploring their own solar system, they saw out in the deep a new star and a new planet. They went out on a long journey and the next thing they knew, they found themselves stuck at Earth with no technology, with no way of getting home. And they have to start all over from scratch. But while they're here, they really do feel like exploring this local solar system. They know the name of the planet they are on is called Earth, and they have named its satellite the Moon, with a slightly different variation in the spelling from what they are used to. Those Kerbins, always being as creative as they possibly can, excited for their journey. But in the meantime, let's focus on how dark it is and Jebediah deploying his parachute, looking up, trusting that it's there even though he can't see it because it is much darker here in this part of the galaxy. And even though it's so dark, Jebediah has to trust that the parachute will fully deploy even though he cannot see it. As we get closer and closer to the water, ready to splash down in whichever ocean we are in. Oh, and then you can hear 
our debris stage splashing into the water, wishing that it had a parachute. But unfortunately, it does not. And we get closer and closer, just over 200 meters. Not really sure which body of water this is. Maybe old me should have checked the map instead of going into the inventory system. Inventory, which is currently empty. Jebediah, not quite as excited as you'd like for him to look. You would expect him to be very excited about all of the science that he has brought back with him from the dark side of the moon. We cannot wait to see what marvelous technology is unlocked for the next mission. And here we go, splashing down. Oh, uh, come on, recover the stage. Come on, you can do it. There we go. I knew you could do it, Jeb. And look at that, 152 science. And now let's go see what it is we can unlock here in the science station. We have plenty of science. We might just unlock the rest of this tech tree here. It looks like... Well, we want the struts from general construction, but we also want the reaction wheel from flight control. So we are going to go and get those. And we can get extra batteries as well. But unfortunately, we can't get solar panels. That'll have to be in the next mission. Until then, I'm Ben Marcos. You stay classy. Mm -hmm.